On July 28, 2005, the Gambian media reported the sighting of eight dead bodies in Rufut Forest near Ghana town, a town predominantly inhabited by Ghanaian citizens in the Gambia. The deceased were believed to be Ghanaians who had been killed and dumped in the forest. Later, it was discovered that the bodies were part of about 56 West African migrants, including about 44 Ghanaians who had been shot and killed. Yaya Jame, then president of the Gambia, denied responsibility, eventually giving Ghana an amount of 500,000 US dollars for burial expenses, not compensation, for the victims' families under an ECOWAS and UN facilitated investigation and an MOU. Under the terms of the MOU, Ghana and the Gambia pledged to, among other things, bring the actual perpetrators of the unlawful killing to justice if new evidence was on earth to that effect. New evidence has now emerged. Two of the soldiers who participated in the murder of the Ghanaians have testified publicly before the Gambian Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission that they killed the Ghanaians on the orders of President Jame. A jungle operation. Did you, did you participate in an operation in 2005? 2000, uh, 2005. Yes, July yes, I, 2005. I did. Can you tell us about it? That was the, these Ghanaians who they said were mercenaries. It when we arrived at the ground, yes. Solo said these people are mercenaries. The order from the head of state, the former president, Yaya Jame, is to be, they are all to be, they are all to be executed. And did, we start escorting them. Did anybody oppose the idea? No, and there was no. At the time, Solo was the senior man on the ground. You all accepted the order? Yes. Tell us how the killings occurred. We, we, <clears throat> we were transporting them one by one to the firing ground. Me and Ali Ujeng, Malik and uh, Sana Manjang were standing there. When we take this person, they fire at him, he fall in the ditch. We come back for another. Until the last man, I took him up to the up to the ditch. When I when we were going up to the because since we picked them from here, I was investigating him, asking him whether they were what they were alleged for that they were mercenaries. But he said they were not mercenaries. They were they were going. There were people going to Europe. They were going. To, they were trying. To they were backway boys. Yes, they are backway boys. So on that we were discussing until we reached at that point. So when I took this man up to the ditch, before we reached the ditch, he was having a note, 100 euro note. He gave it to me. He told me that it's, it's not necessary for me to die with this. You are living, you may use it. You have been nice to me since we took off from Banjul. When we arrived, he asked me to give him charge. Sanamanyan told me, finish, finish him. He asked me for, him, for me to allow him to say his prayers. I said, go ahead. He kneeled down to say his prayers. Then Sanamanja has already released the shot and fired him. I shoot at the victim. You killed him? Yes, sir. Saying, Jesus, save us. Jesus, help us. And this was say, being said constantly. And now, the victims, their families, and the Jame to Justice Ghana campaign are calling for Yaya Jame and the soldiers who participated in the torture, unlawful killing, and the enforced disappearance to be brought to justice and victims paid compensation. <laughs> For what he have done, I want justice on behalf of my friends and me. So I want to see Ejame in prison. The victims and their families are not alone in this call for justice and compensation. A coalition of civil society organizations called the Jame to Justice Ghana campaign has also joined in. We are in this campaign to add our voice, our power, our resources, our might to this campaign that these people are brought to justice and that the families of these victims find solace in the justice uh, that we are seeking for them.
there is enough evidence to prove that indeed uh, the junglers who committed this act uh, took orders from Yaya Jame himself. CBD is, is deeply involved in this campaign because um, as, as part of our core mandate, we, we promote good governance, um, democracy, and also the protection of fundamental human rights of all citizens, including uh, marginalized vulnerable ones such as migrants. So that is why CBD is deeply involved. Our work involves helping to ensure that all citizens enjoy their fundamental human rights, including the right to life. Well, the Jammer to Justice campaign is about getting the Ghana government to reopen investigations into the killing of Ghanaian migrants in the Gambia and ensuring that the families of those victims get justice. On the legal issue regarding the extradition of Yaya Jame to stand trial in the Ghanaian court, Justice Emil Short, a former judge of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and former commissioner of Ghana's Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, had this to say. From the purposes of international to the present day, the international committee, international community has considered or consolidated the idea that the nature and seriousness of certain crimes transcends the responsibility of a particular sovereign state and affects humanity as a whole. So the doctrine seeks to empower courts, no, no matter where the offense was committed and no matter who the accused persons are, to invoke this doctrine to hold accountable people who commit such international crimes. Everyone needs to get justice. It's been too long, uh, not much has happened. Uh, the two countries pledged that if new evidence came out, then they would uh, reopen this matter. The evidence has come out, and the evidence is overwhelming. And we urge the government of Ghana, as well as the Gambia, to ensure that uh, these uh, individuals who were unlawfully killed when violations the right to life has occurred, they are provided with an effective remedy.